As well, joining me now is Stephen Bush, the special correspondent at the New Statesman, editor of the left wing news website, The Canary, Kerry Ann Mendoza, strategic advisor to the Jeremy for Labour campaign, Jeremy Gilbert, and former editor of The Sun, David Young. Good evening to all of you. Uh, first of all, Jeremy Gilbert, what is Jeremy Corbyn's strategy with the media? Well, Jeremy's strategy with the media is, is partly what you would expect any politician's strategy with the media to be, to engage with it as productively as possible. But he also has a different agenda, a new kind of agenda, which is to reach out directly as far as possible to a, a broader constituency across the country, to re reach out to supporters through social media, through independent media. Uh, and I think this is quite challenging to established mainstream media. I think they find this quite difficult to understand. They find it quite threatening. And I think... Um, uh, but I think it is, it's a strategy which is appropriate to the 21st century. So how does he engage with mainstream media then? Well, he, does, he engages with mainstream media in the same way anybody does when he gets the chance to do so. I mean, he, he, yeah, he's, he's, um, he does interviews, he issues statements, he answers questions, uh, he campaigns. I think we've seen... It's, but we see the very question is, does he need the mainstream media? Does he need it? Uh, well, we all need it to some extent, to the extent that it's willing to do its job. I mean, we all need it. We all need the mainstream media to the extent that the mainstream media is willing to actually represent a broad swathe of opinion across the country and, and across the population. Is the mainstream media doing its job as far as uh, Jeremy Corbyn's concerned, do you think, David Young? Well, I think it is. I think the, the first thing to say is that no Labour leader post-war has ever had the support of more than 20-25% of the press except for Tony Blair and we could perhaps talk about that later. Yeah. Um, uh, so any Labour leader starts off on a very very sticky wicket and you know but the, Jeremy Corbyn is on an even stickier wicket because of the news because of what because of the because you know a good chunk or most of the shadow cabinet don't support him the mayor they, they you know so the Khan doesn't support him the leader up in Scotland doesn't support him you just re the, the media is reporting the news and the biggest risk for Jeremy Corbyn is that he disappears from the news agenda which is what had begun to happen until today because obviously today the vote starts mm -hmm. but a lot of uh, uh, not just Tory press but basically he's been nowhere near the front page for a long time they just basically have written him off altogether. Um, so therefore then mm -hmm. Kerry Ann what do you think the Canary does uh, as an online at forum and online paper that mainstream media doesn't. I think what we're trying to do and in becoming increasingly successful in doing is challenging some of these dominant narratives. We have a situation in this country where 81% of the mainstream media is owned by six corporations. Most of the journalists who staff them went to a handful of universities and graduated about six inches to the left or the right of each other politically. So actually this little gap between them becomes the minuscule arena for political debate in this country. And anyone who operates outside of that is either mocked, ignored or ridiculed or derided as some sort of mad, bad and but dangerous person. So what we're trying to do, and that's a crisis, by the way. But, but and you're is... a big supporter. The, the, <coughs> the, you are there backing Jeremy Corbyn to the hilt. Well, what, I'm, what we're doing, actually, is something slightly different to that, which is ourselves, incredible blogs like Ang Another Angry Voice, Vox Political, you've got Media Diversified, Navarra Media. We're actually saying, hang on a minute. There is a vast spectrum of ideas, of great ideas, outside of that minuscule so, arena. And so we you want would to say that that was actually... Well, them. that's interesting, because there is a vast spectrum of ideas. And would you be as happy to report uh, on that vast spectrum right-wing ideas as well as left-wing ideas? I think there's more than enough space occupied currently by the mainstream media so discussing no. right-wing ideas. But that's interesting, cause, because what you're essentially saying is that you are not in any way an objective. So you are cheerleaders for Jeremy Corbyn and the left. Absolutely not. What, what I'm saying is, is there is a vast political spectrum of ideas and they are sadly mm -hmm. underrepresented in the mainstream media today. And what you now have is essentially parallel revolutions happening in politics and in the media. In politics, you have the courageous and capable politicians of the SNP in Scotland, Plaid Cymru and Wales, Corbyn's Labour, and in the media you have the likes of the, of the Canary, which didn't exist. We didn't exist a year ago, Kirsty. In July, we became one of the top read so, news sites in the UK. We so overtook the New Statesman, we overtook The Economist, The Spectator, and as I say, we are flanked so by minute, extraordinary uh, other sites so, too. So, so you feel under threat from the Canary, do you? I mean, I wouldn't honestly say that it's a website that I particularly worry about. They're trying to do something mm. very different to mm. what we're doing. Uh, I mean, 
yeah, I don't want to litigate other people's no, news no, judgments on air, but, think, I, yeah, yeah. but I, you know, I kind of sort of take the view that, in some ways, the thing about the mainstream media is if it fails to represent enough people, then it dies, doesn't mm -hmm. it? Mm -hmm. Ult ultimately, yeah. your, your readership uh, is, is, the, is the only currency that matters. Uh, but, but do you think you're when, when you're when you're reporting? Sorry to interrupt, but when you're reporting on Jeremy uh, Jeremy Corbyn when you're doing op-eds and so forth, do you think the New Statesman is biased against Jeremy Corbyn? No, I think we uh, contain the whole. Of, our aim is always to contain the whole of the left. So we have everything from James Schneider, who is a senior member of Momentum, Michael Chesham, who I think is probably the the most engaging writer on the kind of Corbynite left, all the way to people like John McTurnan, who'd quite like to take an ice pick to Jeremy Corbyn. <laughs> so we're kind of the on. I trying to see ourselves as the honest broker in the Labour Party's ongoing stramash. And, and and you would see uh, the New Statesman as the honest broker. Uh, I wouldn't go that far. I mean, I think they clearly. I, I, I respect the fact they make the effort to do um, what Stephen has described. Down by faint praise, but, um, I see. But I don't think. But I think the range of voices, I think, is clearly skewed, not to the not not towards the far right, not towards mm. the people like McTernan, but towards a certain kind of soft left, a kind of point of convergence but, between the soft left and the old Labour right, which is essentially committed to the idea that there is one particular way in which you do politics. You do politics by having a, a nice popular, marketable leader who's a little bit social democratic, who's a bit respectable. And a and bit kind of popular in the country? Well, but popular in the country ideally, but historically it's a model of politics which has failed multiple times. It's, well, the, it's the strategy which failed for Neil Kinnock twice, it's the strategy that failed for Ed Miliband, it's the strategy that failed for Gordon Brown. I think the question we have to ask to some extent is why so many people in the Parliamentary mm -hmm. Labour Party and, and indeed in, in the liberal, the sort of left liberal press like The Guardian and The Statesman are so committed to a political strategy which has failed so many times. Stephen Bush. I mean, the f success rate for Corbynism so far is 1983, which didn't go that well. 2016, the same trajectory of electoral fate. Not worse than Ed Miliband, not better. And we know what happened at the end of the story mm -hmm. to Ed Miliband. So, thus far, it's kind of, you know, it's very much an open well, verdict. Well, let's take a look at the idea well, that Corbynism is, you can, you can t talk about what happened in 1983 mm. as Corbynism is ridiculous. This is 35 years later. And this is like, well, but well, let's someone let's who unquestionably got, got into politics as Tony Benn's uh, closest, uh, I just as the, the leader of that group within Parliament well, from Corbyn, 1983. But I think Corbynism, um, what we talk about as Corbynism is something quite different. We right, well, let me just talk about Corbynism. Can we just talk about this now, with both you and David Yen? Let's take a particular issue because the, this is where this is a kind of almost like you know, you know viewers and listeners start here what is the position for example over trident the labor party's position is one thing it's multilateralism jeremy corbyn's position is quite different now presumably you would say the media should report on both positions and should have critical analysis between the two yes i would say that and it's been quite clear that that's on that's one of the issues there hasn't been that kind of balance i mean i, I think that's one of the issues where um, and, you know, voices who are critical of and hostile to Jeremy's position on Trident have been have appeared on well, multiple times on news programmes with no countervailing voice. Well, well David Yell, what is that? Let's take that issue and say the Labour Party is the party of opposition. It has a position. Jeremy Corbyn has a completely different position. Yeah, I mean, listen, I think we've just gone through the Brexit vote and I think we have to remember that the country out there beyond the studio is, is a, a very different place to the discussion that's happening here. And they are radically different, is in a different position and isn't really looking at the detail and uh, shouldn't look at the detail. People have lives to pay the mortgage and, you know, educate the children and all that, all that stuff. The reality is, the reason that the that the press got very aggressive with Neil Kinnock towards the, uh, the when he very nearly was elected was on his defence policy. There were there were pe people who were, and, and in my opinion, quite right too. I don't think Kinnock was should have been elected. I think it would have been dangerous for the West and dangerous for, dangerous for Britain. And a lot of very serious people, by which I mean serious journalists, serious people in the country. I'm not talking about some sort of you know, not talking about Rupert or anybody like that, I'm talking about voters, said to themselves, we cannot elect this man. And it's the same with, with uh, Jeremy Corbyn, although there are many, uh, there are many other issues. I mean, cloud cuckoo land, the reason that the press have started to ignore Jeremy Corbyn is he is quite clearly never going to be elected. He is quite clearly never going to be decision. prime minister. That, There's just not a chance. Sure. Should, so, you know... Should, that, should the press make that decision? 
No, Where's... but the thing is they do. They have for several elections over and what we've seen, I think really this is, this is the problem really with I think the mentality of the Labour coup is they're really trying to fight the 2005 election all over again and the elections of the past couple, you know, decade or so where you essentially have Middle England deciding because you have 40% of people almost who aren't even bothering to vote anymore, they've just tuned out. Um, I know in the last election, 76% of people didn't vote Labour. And I think what Corbyn is doing, what the Green Party is doing, what the SNP are doing, these progressive anti-austerity mm -hmm. political parties are saying, can we please stop fighting over this 24% over here and actually go for the 76% over but here, the people think... who are absolutely craving a new kind of but politics which cr actually stands for something, which says, look, we are facing multiple crises on multiple fronts but right now in foreign policy, the but NHS, but job polls, and security. Okay. And opinion, we need polls, answers. But opinion polls would suggest that, yeah, that Jeremy Corbyn clearly has a very, very big following, in a way, amongst the faithful and amongst the people he's energised. But in terms of opinion polls, he wouldn't win the country with that platform. But these are the same opinion polls which have been terribly incorrect for a, so for a period think, of Stephen? time now. But well, I mean, it's not really accurate to say the opinion polls over the last. Five electoral cycles, the online mm -hmm. polls got the referendum right, mm -hmm. all of the polls got the SNP surge right, they all got the independent referendum right, and when they have got it wrong, they've overstated the Labour Party. So I think if you're looking for th positive things to say about Jeremy Corbyn, saying we know what the polls have got wrong is literally the worst thing to say. Because if there is an error in the polls, all of the trends would suggest it would be underestimating I Labour, the, the Sanctuary Labour Party. That's the, where the kind of excitement about the new politics is coming from. I think the excitement is coming from that particularly working class communities who have tuned out of politics for quite some time and you actually now have the seeds of a Labour movement happening in, in this country again, the likes of which we've not seen in some time. And you can be sure of this, you can be sure of this. If Owen Smith was going out and having thousands of people turning up to rallies and the Labour Party membership was surging over Owen Smith, these people would be saying, oh my goodness, this is promising. These are some really you know, great signs of engagement. No, just, just, just very, very quickly, will we see Jeremy Corbyn and Owen Smith on the front pages between now and September the 21st or not? A little bit, but not that much. Thank you all very much indeed.